Let's try this out, see how it works. Hey ChatGBT, can you make me a 10 question multiple choice quiz that's kind of funny and bizarre and uses information and facts from past ignoble prize award winners, focus on animals and biology, and use our default format. Let's see what it comes up with. Uh, these are pretty outrageous here. A lot of stuff I did not know. Welcome to Madden Science. Today we're learning about making AI quizzes and using them on Canvas and Google Forms. I really hope this video is helpful for you. My goal is to save you time and help make us more creative and effective teachers. These days there's so much promise and controversy and fear surrounding AI. I'm gonna focus on the current positive uses and specifically the positive time-saving, student performance-enhancing benefits of artificial intelligence. One use case I'd like to share goes a little bit something like this. Step one, ask ChatGPT to generate quiz questions. Step two, save those quiz questions into your desired format, Google Doc, Word file, or most helpful for Canvas users, zipped QTI files. Third, transfer those questions to Canvas or to Google or Microsoft Form. And lastly, use in class to help students learn better and provide assessment and timely feedback. In this video, I will share with you how to use ChatGPT to make quizzes for class, the pros and cons of using ChatGPT for AI quizzes, why I think it's a good idea, and in the end, I'll show you precisely step-by-step step how to generate quizzes and how to format those quizzes into Canvas and Google Forms. Quick side note, one thing I like to make sure I do each time is I let my students know if the practice quiz or review questions were generated using chat GPT and artificial intelligence. Okay, let's consider the pros of using chat GPT for quizzes. First up, efficiency. AI can generate a large number of questions quickly, saving teachers a valuable time. Need a review for ecology and you need 50 new questions? This will do it. It's accessible. AI tools can help new teachers who might need additional help with resources, or with content knowledge, or with workload. I like it because it can give me customization. ChatGPT can tailor questions to specific topics, difficulty levels, and learning objectives. This is the reason for me. The questions with the right prompts and the right direction are better than most other resources. But as with most things, the more specific and directed, the better. Maybe something like this. Hi, can you create a 10 question multiple choice quiz about cell communication and signal transduction? Have the level be at advanced placement for students. Focus on application and synthesis type questions. Use the default format. Now what if you're not quite sure where to begin? Well, how about a prompt or some prompts? You could try something like, Hi ChatGPT, can you help me come up with a few new creative and highly specific prompts for quizzes? I'd like the different prompts cover the major subjects in school and you go from elementary to college level. Include some specific and direct instructions for how to make a helpful and thoughtful quiz. Pick a unique and interesting topic or subject within that particular subject area. For instance, in English, maybe something about Macbeth or To Kill a Mockingbird. Let's see how these turn out.
as demonstrated here, I really like how I can customize and add variety. And so variety comes in a few different forms, like the type of question. You could do an essay or ACT, SAT style, multiple choice, short answer, phenomena based. You can change up the level. Something easy for review, extra challenging for discussion or group work, maybe at the 10th grade or AP or middle school level. Questions can be aligned to standards. I often incorporate NGSS standards, disciplinary core ideas, cross-cutting concepts, and I love using Bloom's taxonomy keywords like understanding or analysis, application, synthesis. You can have ChatGPT analyze content for you. For example, input a YouTube video transcript and ask ChatGPT to generate a quiz based off of the transcript. I've even done this for my own videos, like this one going over how to use a microscope. This is particularly helpful as a lead-in or check-in before having classes use microscopes for the first time. You can also do this for an article or other online source material. Huge time saver and can help with accountability. Here are some examples of how I've used it. Pre-test, post-test, bell ringers, exit tickets, phenomena questions, study and homework questions, case studies, New York Times science articles, YouTube videos. And do you have any ESOL students? If so, this could be huge. You can use it for translation. So you make your normal quiz and it can quickly translate English into 50 or so other languages. Now there's way more potential applications. So can you do me a favor? If you have any additional ways of using this technology, please consider sharing it in the comments with us below. Now on to the cons and controversies of using ChatGPT for quizzes. First off might be accuracy issues. AI might generate incorrect or misleading questions, so definitely proofread. There can be a lack of depth. Questions generated by AI might not always capture the complexity or the nuance necessary for higher level learning. Now it seems like newer models are better and more specific prompts can help. There can be an over-reliance or dependency on AI. It might discourage teachers from engaging deeply with content and pedagogy. I think this is the biggest challenge. Now for me, I'm doing this stuff in addition to things we've already got. It helps me increase creativity and curiosity. So like many things, how you use it makes all the difference. Now there's ethical concerns. Is it cheating? Using AI for educational assessments raises questions about fairness, maybe bias in AI models, and authenticity of the educational experience. Is using chat, GPT, and AI different from using a test bank or Canvas Commons or pass down questions via thumb drive from a friend? I don't know. There are some technical limitations. AI and chat, GPT are still in their infancy. Understanding complex educational content is tough. New versions promise to keep improving. A few specific things I think that are missing might be graphs and data tables, figures, etc. But you can always add these things in later manually. I think probably the biggest con would have to be missing out on the benefit, the difficult but good benefit of crafting your own test questions. Doing that is really important as an educator. Now here's why I think it's a good idea. Support for teachers. An AI system can be really helpful, taking on the time-consuming task of generating basic assessment materials. It can help with adaptability. AI can quickly adapt and adjust to new educational material and changing educational standards. And it can be highly personalized. It can help create personalized learning experiences with adapted questions based on individual students and class performance. Okay, so here's how you do it. Follow along with me as I generate a quiz and go through the entire process in real time. Let's start the clock. Let's go ahead and start with the prompt that we had earlier about our 10 question multiple choice quiz using questions about cell signaling and signal transduction. We'll let AI do its magic. It comes up and again, you proofread it as it goes. And of course, afterwards, 
Now, once the questions are in, I can directly copy it over into a Google Doc or a Word document and edit from there if I like. So there's a little button that has, you know, copy right here. I can go to a Google Doc and hit paste and we're good to go. For this, you probably want to delete some of the extra writing on the top and the bottom. You can also go directly in here and ask it to save it as a text file. Can you save that as a text file? This will take a little while for the analyzing. The next step, once it's given you a download for the TXT file, is that we're going to put it into this text to canvas quiz generator from San Diego State University. So I'll check back in here. Looks like we're good to go. I'll click on that, have it downloaded. And then I can go to here. Drag my files in. It will give me a new zipped QTI file that I will keep. From there, you can jump over to your Canvas page. On the top right, there's import existing content. The content type that you want is all the way on the bottom, QTI zip file. I'll choose that file here. It's my only option and I'll click import. So get queued up. Usually takes a second or two to run through that. As we wait patiently. Once that's completed, I can go to my modules. I'll refresh it to make sure that it's good to go. And for AP Biology, I will be in Unit 4, Cell Communication, Cell Cycle. Again, keep in mind, you can do this for any subject that you want. If I go to Add in here, Add Quiz, I go to the bottom. We have this quiz here, and I hit Add Item. Once you go in, you have a quiz that is good and ready to go. You can edit that change the title. You see the questions are already in here. If you wanted to add an image to something, obviously you go in and edit that and you can change it up as you see fit. Another thing that you can do, and this works every once in a while and hopefully gets a little better, is that you can ask ChatGPT, can you now save that as a zipped.qti file? And this has been working off and on, but you can directly pull this into Canvas without having to go through text to Canvas converter. Another option, of course, is if you go from ChatGPT over here and you copy into Word or into Google Docs, is you could save this as a plain text file. That file can then be pulled into your text to Canvas Converter. Keep in mind this link here from San Diego State will be in the description below. What else can we do with this? So you have your chat GPT, the files that are directly downloadable. You can pull these into Google and Microsoft Forms, say for a quick import, right? You don't want to save it as a PDF or a Word document, and this would be generated into its own quiz on here independent of Canvas. Okay, so that wraps it up. That's our move to create an artificial intelligence quiz of any type that you like, convert it into a file that's usable on Canvas or Google Forms or Microsoft Forms. I hope that's helpful. I hope it helps make all of us better teachers and I hope it makes our students better learners. Let me know if you have any questions. Take care, everybody.